Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jimmy the Mower and today we're going to be servicing this G-Series Yamaha Golf Buggy. Right then, to service the Golf Buggy we just need a few simple parts. I've got them here in this bag. We need an air filter pre-foam screen. The actual air filter itself. Now, they're a bit different to normal. You know, we normally have one of these in there. Don't very often see these, but this is what goes in there. We've got a fuel filter, which filters all the uh, petrol out for us, make sure it's nice and clean. And we've got a spark plug. Now, this is just a generic service kit. You can buy these direct from the manufacturer. You can buy them uh, from Amazon, eBay, wherever, loads of different people. We've had every sort of kit you can get. And believe me, apart from the spark plug, which we normally change for an NGK one, the rest of it is exactly the same. And also, we'll do an oil change as well while we're at it. So we'll have done everything then. So without further ado, let's crack on and see how it works out. Okay, so the first step before we do anything with these golf carts is to remove the seat. Now, if you don't know how to remove the seat or you have trouble doing that, then really, you don't really wanna go any further in this video and you wanna take this golf buggy to a trained professional who'll be able to service it for you. But if you're still here, this is how we lift it up. You just hold the seat both sides, pull it towards you and it lifts up. And then down here, we should have some hinges. This is where it clips in and pivots and we should be able to lift it up and it's out. Move that to the side, put that down over there, and we expose the engine bay. Right, we'll just have a quick flick through the engine bay, and I'll just run through the various components, and then we can get on with the oil change. Okay, so we'll have to have a quick run through the engine components then. It's not a detailed description, it just shows you roughly where things are. We start off over this end with a fuel tank. That's some leaded fuel. You don't want to use the new E10 if you can help it. You're best off with the E5, or you can put an additive in there that sort of neutralizes the ethanol that's in the fuel. Fuel comes out into the little fuel filter here. You can see this one's quite dirty. It could do with a clean. From the fuel filter into the fuel pump that's tucked away under there. Little centrifugal pump that pumps round. The air filter and housing is in there. Carburetor down underneath. Spark plug hidden in this gap here. Oil and oil dipstick are in this bit. This is the exhaust here. This gets really hot. So if you take this off and you've been running the machine, don't put your hand on this. It is extremely hot. I think there is some uh, warning on the top, but as these get old, you, you can't see that. Then we come over to the drive belt of the machine. You might not be able to see that from there. It works on a centrifugal clutch. There's a couple of belts on there. One drives the alternator and one drives the wheels. And then we've got the battery over here and a little fuse box. And that's basically it. The first thing, as I said, we do is drain the oil. And we always do the oil first because while the oil's draining out, we can carry on with the rest of the service before we put the oil back in. The oil drain plug is a 17 mil spanner and it's located down underneath here. Um, I'll have to get under there, I'll crack that open and I'll just start draining the oil out and then we'll come back and do the air filter. Right then, so to drain the oil, as I said, we crack the uh, 17 mil nut down the bottom there. That's all we have to do. We get our oil pan. Um, I don't know if you've got one of these, you can use a bucket, a bowl, whatever you want. We use one of these, it just makes life easier. You unscrew that, pop that in there so it's out of the way. We can then slide this underneath, like so, and then with that underneath, when we undo the nut, all the oil drops in there, we can slide it out and it's nice and safe. However, to enable the oil to drain freely, we've got a little plug in the top, the oil filler plug, we take that out, and that allows the air flow into the top, which allows the air out the bottom. So if we do that, then we know that we're gonna drain as much oil out of it as we can. So we'll take that out and just leave that on the deck, I'll crack this nut. I'm sorry, you cannot get a photograph of this. It's tucked down underneath the belt for the alternator. So the belt for the alternator, there's a little hole in the floor. We thread this through, you're doing it blind. If you can jack it up, you could get in and do it from underneath. You've got better vision. I've done this plenty of times. If you were looking for it, it'd be quite difficult to find. So if you're here just for this bit, that's great. That's where it is. Underneath that pulley, we'll get a photograph of the socket in place and I'll just crack that off and we'll drain the oil and then we'll move on to the filters. Okay then, so now we move on to the air filter. Right, this buggy's come to us, it's been uh, standing around for quite a while. It doesn't uh, run, we've turned it over um, and we couldn't get it to fire up. We've 
put an, uh, a new battery, not a brand new battery, a, a, one of our batteries that we know work, we put that on and it still wouldn't go. So we're going to change the air filter, the spark plug, the fuel filter, put some fresh fuel in there and see if that makes a difference. So to change the air filter, it's quite simple. These clips come off all the way around and it's hinged towards you. So that'll lift up and there we go. That's the case off. Nothing special about that. The air filter comes off as well, just lifts out. Now, that's pretty clean, I think. So I don't think we have any problems with air. Um, definitely not, but we've got a new one. We'll put it in and we've eliminated that problem then, haven't we? So that's that. And then that's our little uh, rubber mat in there or foam mat in. Now, this, the air intake comes up through the bottom and this traps dust. Um, you, I don't know if you can see dust coming out of there. It's dusty. We're driving around golf courses in the mud. We get mud inside them. We're driving around in the hot, dusty conditions and we get a lot of dust in there. So this stops the dust before it gets to the actual filter itself. So we've got a bit of uh, dirt and debris in here. So we'll have to give this a bit of a, a clean out and then we'll uh, put the, uh, the new filters in, okay? Right, that's all cleaned out then really. There's a bit of oily residue in there. We've given a wipe round with a rag, so that's, that's that cleared out. We've got the dust and debris out of there. We can put the new foam back in there now. That just stops it as the air gets sucked in through here. That stops uh, the, the sort of real heavy duty dust and debris going through. And then we put the air filter on top. When we put the air filter on top, it sits down. It's then sucking the air up through here. It comes out of this grid along and through there and down into the carburetor. When we put this down, look, this rubber makes a nice tight seal. We put the lid on and we do the clasps up and it makes a nice tight seal all the way around. Now, see if I can put it back on easily enough. It's always hard when you're doing these things blind, them over the far side. That's it. That sits on tight, forms a tight seal, and to make sure that seal's airtight, we clip these clips on all the way around. So that's it, and now it's completely sealed in there. That's the air side of the things done. Now all we've got to do, move on to the fuel side. We're going to change this fuel filter over here. That's easy as well. We'll get that done, and then it's over to the spark plug. So let's crack on. I'll get the fuel filter out and we'll do that one next. Right, the fuel filter is located here. The job of the fuel filter is basically to filter out any contaminants from this tank of unleaded. We put our fuel in here. Um, we very rarely take these to petrol stations. You're messing around with tins and cans and plastic bottles. So there, there is a, a degree of getting some impurities in there. But also, we're driving around in dusty and muddy conditions. So, you know, you need a sound and solid tank, really. The fuel comes up out of the top here, along this line and into this filter. This is a new one and you can see how clean the new one is. Nice clean paper filter in the middle. And this is the one that's on there. I'll take this off. There might be a little bit of residue left, but it looks all right. But you can probably see that is quite dirty. <laughs> There's a lot of dirt and grime in there. So it needs to be changed. These are disposable parts, they cost couple of quid if that don't bother trying to clean them out or do anything with them you're just making a rod for your own back you just want to put a new one on now there's a bit of a bone of contention about which way the fuel filter goes on i'm going to put this one on the same way as we took it off basically we come in from this end into the plastic chamber itself and then it has to suck the fuel through the paper element and out this way so we come in so we've got the fuel in the plastic tank and then we go out through the filter bit. We do that and then that way, like this one, any contaminants that are in there are gonna be stuck on the outside of that paper filter and when they're stuck on the outside, we can visually see them. We've got a, a, you know, a good benchmark of how dirty it is. So that's there, we can see that that's dirty and it needs changing. If you put them on the other way, they do work, not as well, and everything that, you, that goes in is stuck on the inside and you can never tell because the fuel in the bowl will always be clean, even if the filter's clogged. So we put it back on the way it came off. Now there are some little clips on here and the hoses on here don't look too great, but we just want to put the new fuel filter on, put the air filter in, 
put everything together, oil in there. We know we've done everything. If it doesn't run then, then we can have a look at something else, can't we? But we're going to put this on. So we just squeeze that on there. And then we squeeze the other end on. <sighs> That's a snug fit both ends. Right, I can see a bit of a problem already. As, as this is sitting in here, this hose is kinking over. That might restrict the fuel flow slightly. So that might be something to, to do with the problem that we had before. I'll try and put this over somewhere. Lost a bit there. I'll try and put this over somewhere. Um, maybe loop it, put along a bit of hose on, loop it round there if we're having problems, who knows. But it goes from here into this little fuel pump and the fuel pump takes it down to the carburetor and any fuel that's unspent goes round the back and comes back to tank. So that's how that system works. So that's the fuel filter done. That's as much as we can do there. Now we've got to switch sides again and we've got to get the spark plug out of this little gap down here and we'll put a new one in. Okay then, to remove and replace the spark plug is a simple task. Here it is down here. We'll turn the camera around now with the opposite side of the engine. If you're still wondering where the oil uh, sump plug is, it's just down there underneath there where my hand is, right the way down. Uh, the dipstick's there. That's the oil filler cap. We've taken that off, that's on the floor. This is the spark plug here. We pull this out, move that out the way. We need a, a 21 mil, I think it is. I'm hoping it is. 21 mil down there. Yep, yeah, that's right. Put the extension bar on, I think. And then really, if the spark plug has been put in properly, it's probably about a quarter turn to get the, uh, to, to break the seal. And then once that's been done, it should literally unscrew by hand. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's nice and steady. Well, I'm presuming that the spark plug should be pretty clean. Uh, I know this machine's been stood for a while, that's why we're changing it, everything in it before we try and uh, get it fired up properly. But uh, you've got to stop worrying about, you know, changing these uh, servicing on an annual basis. You service on an annual basis, if it does 10 miles or it does a, 100 miles you've got to service the machine it's sitting here the spark plugs are going rusty we've got you know bad fuel in the tank the air filter gets a bit dusty and corroded you can get mice in here so you've got to change it you've got to change it all the time if you're doing sort of a couple of hundred hours you change your you service all the all the parts on there that you can do if it goes on to like an annual basis you can do it then but they must be done every year it's no good leaving it four or five years saying oh we only do 10 hours a year it doesn't work like that these things need to be changed right now i've got that off my chest here's a spark plug again that doesn't look too bad um we turned it over before and the spark plug's completely dry so i'm presuming that'll be sparking but it doesn't matter if it is or not because there's been no fuel in there at all it's dry as a bone well We'll change it anyway, we'll put that out, we'll put that to one side, we can test that at a later date. And if it works, it'll just go into stock as a spare. If you ever have a problem with a spark, you can put that one on, knowing it's working, and uh, eliminate another problem. So, right, this one goes in. If I can find the hole, that's it. We just put that in. Spin that up by hand. Now, you've got to be careful when you're putting these spark plugs in. If they're in a... That angle, it'd be easy. That angle, it'd be easy, but they're always on a slope. And when they're on a slope, it causes a bit of bother because you can easily cross thread them. And if you cross thread them, then you can cause a lot of damage and it costs you a lot of money to put right. Now, I'll put this on and I should just be able to tighten it up, rest it away by hand. That's it, I think we're almost there. There's a lot of thread on this one. Right, that's it. Once it's tight, we can put the socket on, click it over, and we literally do a quarter of a turn. That's it, just to tighten it up. That's all we do. When we put it in, we've got this little washer here. When this little washer that sits in there, that gets compressed, squashes down, and that forms a seal. So you don't want to over tighten it, you just, just enough to nip it up and form a seal. So that's that done. We can put that in and that's that fuel filter air filter spark plug fill up the oil put a bit of grease into this on the top on the clutch and away we go right i put the oil drain plug back in underneath um i've put the oil in as well it doesn't take a lot we you can use um the 530 or you can use 
1040, uh, whichever you prefer. We tend to use 1040 because it, um, it's a little bit thicker. We use these buggies sort of in the cold uh, and in the heat of the summer as well. So you've got a, a good mix there with the 1040, there's a wide area. Um, the only note to make when putting the oil in, use your funnel and put some rag or some tissue around here because these are the belts. And if you spill any, especially when you're taking it out, it drop on the belt and the belts will slip and it can take a good while to actually uh, get that off there. So I'll just uh, take this out. Oh, I'm pretty sure that we're bob on with it, but uh, I'll just double check anyway. Got the dipstick at the side. Again, put your tissue down there because you don't want to drip any on the belts, right? So we're up to the max and you can see that that oil there is, uh, is quite clean. So you'll never get all of it out. Whenever you change the oil in something, you'll never get all the oil out. You get most of it out, 90% out, and then put the rest in. So that's it, that's good. The only thing we've got to do, which I did forget about, <clears throat> was on here, we've got a little grease nipple. And this is the clutch, as we accelerate, um, bring the engine up to speed, this pulls itself in and that grips the belt and that gives us some uh, propulsion. So you need your grease gun, you need to get some grease in there, probably three or four pumps and, uh, and that should do. But it's just something to keep an eye on. If it's ever sort of sticking a bit, not turning over so easily, make sure you've got plenty of grease in there because this is one of the fastest moving parts on the entire buggy. So that's about it then. I think we'll put the seat back on and we can uh, put our foot in the accelerator and see if it fires up and see what happens. There you go then, it's running like a dream. Eh? Slow and steady is the name of the game when you're servicing these machines. We drop the oil out first and while that's draining out, we can change the air filter, the spark plug, the fuel filter, make sure everything's where it should be, go around with a grease gun, top it up with fresh fuel, hit the accelerator and away you go. Absolutely fantastic, I'm chuffed to bits. If you've got anything nice to say, you can pop that in the comment section below. And if you know anything else about these buggies that I don't, because really we're still learning about these, we've had very few through, pop that in there as well, because I'm always willing to learn. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you can. I'm Jimmy the Mower, I'll catch you on the next one.